Okay, we're going to use LightDB, and this time we're going to use it to store Final Fantasy VI's data. Uh, so I have a other video on NoSQL and LightDB uh, using that with Godot. This one's going to be a little bit simpler because we're not going to pass from C# -sharp to GD script and create objects uh, in the scene that hold the data. We're just going to use the database, which is a little more straightforward. So we're going to need LightDB using LightDB. And again, I have that other NuGet tutorial. We'll, sh we'll show how to install a package. So again, to install the package, you can use the, the package manager GUI, put LightDB. We're also going to need Newtonsoft JSON. Uh, the alternative to that is in the CS project file. You can put the NuGet uh, package references right in this item group. That's the manual way to add it, but the GUIs are easier. So just make sure you have the those things installed because we're going to need them. So first, uh, we just need to have some variables here that will store the database and our collections. The database itself is just going to be a single file. You can pick the path for that. The collections are going to be any type of object that we want to keep track of data on. We're just going to create a collection for that. So here we're going to initialize the database and initialize the collections, which right down here. This is essentially just getting the path um, and then this connection string you uh, have the file name equal to the database path that you choose where you're going to write that file. I will put a password so no one can edit your data with a text editor. And the connection type is just meant to allow multiple things happening at once, I think. Uh, but anyway, just uh, so this will create the database, uh, new light database in that connection string. And if it's already there, it won't, it won't bother. You know, it's already done. Initialize collections, it's very much the same thing. We take that game database that we just stored, and you know, again, we have it in a variable as well. So that, that object get collection, and the type of collection, which is going to be a C sharp class, which I'll show you in a moment, and then the name of that collection that you want, anything you want. So first, I want to talk about this. The C sharp classes are going to define the fields in the database uh, collection. So we're going to look at one of those first, ability like we're starting with here, make sure you have this ID field for LightDB anyway. This is important. So it's in that object ID comes from the LightDB uh, library and name it this to underscore ID because when you query LightDB, it will return results. But if your class doesn't have this as a property, you won't be able to access it. And you do need that to update the database. So we're going to go through some of these uh, classes just so I can show the uh, traits or fields that I'm storing on each of them. So if you're reproducing this, you know, you get to see all the abilities, but I'm going to go kind of quickly through them because a lot of it's repetition and it gets kind of boring. So um, every one of these has its name. Uh, the, the ability class I made to kind of be able to handle different types of abilities, meaning like a spell or some of the monster special abilities or whatever it may be. So some of these aren't going to get used for each ability. But, you know, you got name, power, physical. Some of these are called different things in the different Final Fantasy uh, versions. So if you, if you need to pause this, just uh, by all means, um, I'm going to explain a few of the ones that might not be obvious. But a lot of this stuff is pretty obvious. Magic class is just a string because I was lazy. It's just the black, white, or gray magic that's going to come in handy for organizing them the same way the original game did. And some of the, you know, any time it has a random a chance of happening, like maybe your low energy attacks, you could store that in here. Uh, armors and weapons are going to, uh, armor and weapons are going to be pretty straightforward too. They just kind of have the typical traits. Um, I figured we'd store the statuses that it would induce or block in an enum. Oh, in a list, excuse me. The enums actually, enums are good for whenever you're, um, you have a set list of things that, that something can be Basically, if you can avoid storing stuff as text, then uh, an enum is a nice way to do that. So anytime you see that enums dot whatever, it's coming from this class that I defined and I put in the statuses and, uh, you know, the elementals, just a fish, fish, yummy fish, all that stuff is there. Um, except the stuff I forgot. So this part here, um, damage reduction and damage absorption. A lot of times I tried this method of using an I dictionary uh, where you put in whatever the thing is and store it as an uh, integer or a float to give you uh, a number or percentage chance of that thing happening. Or in this case, maybe percentage uh, of damage reduction or absorption. That way, when you're, you know, if you're calling this in code, you can call the item by its name or by its enum 
and it'll return the percentage. So if you're in, a, you know, you're doing a calculation in the battle algorithm, you want to know like, okay, some jerk cast fire on me. Check my equipment. Does my equipment have fire? You know, et cetera, damage reduction. So since we did armor, I'm just going to click on weapons next because it's, you know, same idea. I don't think there's anything too different in here. Name. Uh, the random ability cast, like if you've got Illumina and, you, and it casts Pearl, it'll, uh, you know, any abilities that get cast in there you can store here. Bushido Capable is just uh, Science Sword Tech. Uh, Runic, same, you know, you know, same deal for the most part. Same damage back row like the locks weapons in the middle of the game. Battle area, this needs to be more complicated to be, really be a true representation, but this will give us the concept. Uh, just the battle area name is going to be, like, I'm going to name the scene of the battle area and then this is going to be a reference to the enemies that should appear in that scene really it might better be a list of lists or something like that because there are different sets of enemies but i'm not going to go that deep at least not yet so character that one's going to have a few that are worth explaining so like native magic activation list same idea the dictionary you put the magic spell name and what level it activates is going to get returned from that dictionary you know hey does that spell activate at such and such a level actually that one should probably be turned around that one should be pass in the level that i just got to and return the spell that i learned yeah this also needs to be turned around what it should be is int string so you can pass in the level and then hey sabin learns mantra you know row position is going to be integral obviously in battle strengths and weaknesses down here um you I think that this doesn't necessarily have to be a static value, of course. So, like, if you're equipped, you could actually just store the character's strengths and weaknesses as a result of the equipment, or you can store it on the equipment. But this is kind of what I was thinking here. Enemy is, you would think, a little simpler, but not really. Um, so a lot of this is the same. So you have the name, level, all of the typical statistics. No HP, and we obviously need the max, depending on what level they're at. I don't know if you would need all of these for every enemy, but uh, actually I'm sure you don't for every enemy, but it's here and you can always mess with it later. Same thing here, elements strong and weak. Um, this one, just to explain a little bit, this is more a correct way to use string and then the float. So like sketch abilities. So from use a sketch, we have a dictionary of the abilities uh, and then the per uh, percent chance that they're gonna happen. Uh, what I was reading is the control are the same abilities that uh, confuse does and so when you're in control obviously you don't need the percentage of that happening but in confuse you would rage abilities of course if gao has the rage you know which abilities same thing with lore sometimes there are multiple items that uh, when you use ragnarok on an enemy that you can get and those also have a percentage uh, chance of turning into that item and dropped and stolen you know self-explanatory so a piece I want to touch on here, uh, this is going to be uh, used in the next tutorial. So in this database handler, um, I'm going to touch on some of these methods just to show how they work. I do want to go over some of these methods. These are going to come into play in the next tutorial where we build out the menu. So I'm actually going to start with this. So get character objects. So when you query the database, you're going to get back that C sharp character object uh, when you query the character collection, of course. So here we pass in the character name and we need to convert that to JSON. And LightDB has a built-in way to um, convert it to JSON, which is what this is doing here. It's going to refer to this, this BSON mapper global to document. What I'm doing here is, since we're just taking the character name in, this is querying the character collection for that character name. And then this LightDB JSON serializer, that converts it to JSON. That's kind of what uh, LightDB offers, is converting back and forth to JSON. But I want the C-sharp object back so we can mess with it in code. So that's what this does. And obviously this can be done to any of these. This uh, character is just the one we're going to use first. So here we get the JSON. I uh, just split it out here to make it a little easier to read. And then this JSON convert, deserialize, and then your class, you know, that character class, that's uh, going to use the Newton soft JSON library. And then that's going to return the actual C sharp object. So that way we can pass in anything that we've stored in the character collection. We can pass in the character's name and get back a C-sharp object where we can access any of these properties. Update character. I did cover this in the other tutorial, but really quickly, we're just going to query for that. Make sure we have that ID. Again, that's why that, uh, that ID is important in all of those classes. So you pass in that modified character. It's going to make sure it's in the database and use that ID property to update 
uh, with the new values that you passed in with that object. So these we're going to use when we start a battle. So get uh, party leader, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You're just querying where the property, which is one of those, um, you know, properties is, is party lead equals true. There's only going to be one, hopefully. This one, uh, get all the characters in the party. This dollar sign is uh, just kind of the light DB syntax. Um, you, like if you use light DB studio, you'll see like it uses the dollar sign to kind of mark the object and then dot property pretty much like any language and equals true. So get character stat as string. This is going to pass in or take in rather a character name and the name of a stat. So like you pass in lock, you pass in HP. Then this uses reflection to say get the property info and then get the value of that property. And that way we can just simply say, give me this person's stat. And then we don't have to rewrite this every time. Get character magic. So one of the things we're going to do in the next tutorial is populate their uh, magic list. And we're going to use this uh, to simplify that. Pass in the character name. And again, the, um, we're going to get a list back. Because again, the character magic list, the property is a list already. So all we have to do is get the single character and get back that magic list property, and that will be a list of abilities. So first we're going to get the character. Um, and pay attention to this dollar sign notation here, so this might look a little confusing if you're not familiar with it. This dollar sign is part of LightDB syntax that we were just talking about. This one outside the quotes is a C-sharp convention, so that within the quotes, so you can pass in a variable value in the curly braces. Pay also close attention to the single quotes on each side of these because you're passing a string into a database query. You want to have the single quotes around it. First to default is necessary here because this method, the find method, could return multiple. So we have to specify first or default because it would break if you had multiple rows. I did have a little issue with the other syntax here. I'm not sure if that's a bug or, or whatever, but that's why I use this way. And it's going to come in handy anyway. So here we just initialize the list, make sure it's not null, and set that magic list that we're returning equal to the result, that character's magic list. And that's going to give us a list of abilities, you know, specifically spells. So to get the boring stuff out of the way here, last thing are these uh, d uh, database default abilities. I'm going to just look at the character ones because they're basically all the same. So first here we have add character and, you know, in other ones it'll be add ability or whatever. It's just the same template. This queries the database to make sure the character doesn't already exist. If it does, just skips out of the method. Insert the character and ensure index makes sure that the that it's unique so that you're, you know, you cannot have two records in here with the same character name. That's what this is saying. That true is ins ensuring uniqueness as well as being an index. And then it just prints out either way. So what I'm doing with these database default scripts is, you know, basically code entering all of the objects that I want to. For one, that's just how LightDB is mainly designed to work, it seems. If I want to change something, I just delete the whole database file. When the game starts up again, it'll run through this. As it is, it just, you know, this is what I get every time. Everything's already in the database. So the add characters, I just break them up into regions for each character. Um, we just create an object as a new character and it'll be whatever C sharp class that you made for that collection. So this would be ability, um, weapon, armor, or whatever. And then open and close the curly braces and then you put all of the properties in here. So this is mostly obvious. So a couple little things to note. So the find one is actually kind of overkill, but it gives a little database integrity, I guess. Um, so this actually finds the spell in the database, so you'd have to add the abilities first, which is uh, important if you're doing it this way. But you don't have to do that. Like you could just create the ability, and I'll show you an example of that below. One point of interest: this native magic activation list again, the spell and what level, which I probably should turn around. So the other example here, Gao, I didn't add all of his rage abilities as abilities uh, or enemies yet, actually. So if you're not actually referencing the database, you, you know you create the object. Uh, right in the list here. So you're creating a new list, create a new ability, and add it right into that unique ability list uh, that's going to be stored, you know, as the character object's unique ability list. And so, yeah, that was fun. You, you can see all of the different rages that he has here. And then you just go through the same process through each character and for each object. So that's all these other ones do. And I, like, for example, I did a list of characters that can equip each item 
This was kind of tedious. Another kind of not terribly often used case is elemental damage reduction. So this, uh, what is this, the, the, the Minerva. So it does, you know, you can store the elementals as an enum, which I did here. And then you uh, just say for each one of those, the percentage of damage reduction. And again, that's why it's a dictionary because there's more than one and you want to uh, be able to get the percentage when you're messing with battle algorithms. And also you can also just see at the end of each of these objects, I, I do add armor, add character, whatever. That's the method at the top. It just adds that variable that I just created. You know, this is the same process as the, uh, you know, as this process, except it's just referencing the different collections. So we're not going to need all of this immediately, but we're going to need some of this in order to feed the battle menus when we actually get into a battle and, and start making up the UI. And that's what will be next.